Okay, welcome to all our viewers who have not yet done Havdal. You can repeat after me. Baruch. Baruch. Hamavdil. Hamavdil. Bain. Bain. Kodesh. Kodesh. L'chol. L'chol. Okay, now we're all kosher. Welcome to everyone, all the three mi- hundred, th- three people watching out there. We're very excited everyone is here. We have an exciting Havdalah tonight uh, for a few different reasons. We would first like to say a huge mazel tov to Miri Garfinkel for losing her sixth tooth, okay? It was on the border, folks. We weren't sure exactly if it was going to make it through Shabbos or not, but it came out. Miri, you look great. Okay, so that's the first exciting mazel tov. And other big news we will get to uh, in a moment. Okay, so we'd like to start at the.com now with a little bit of a fashion uh, point is that uh, Rabbi and uh, the other Rabbi here look uh, a little bit, Rabbi Schwartz, look a little bit scruffier than usual. And it's not just because we want to look like, she, is it chic to have like a scruff? No, it's, no, not, it's chic. not chic anymore? No, that was so 2013. That was 2013. Okay, so now we're 2015. And the reason we're scruffy is because we're in the three weeks right now. There are three weeks now. When you say to most Americans, what are the three weeks? They'd say, well, that's vacation time. Okay, but when you say... In the Torah concept, what the three weeks are, these are the three weeks between two fast days where we mourn all the tragedies that happen, uh, that have happened uh, to the Jewish people. Culminating with Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, when both temples were destroyed, a very sad day. Okay, so the question is, why did this happen? And the reason is that the second temple, the Talmud tells us, was destroyed because of sinat kinam, sinat kinam, baseless hatred. So I'd like to tell a quick story about, about uh, loving your fellow Jew, which I think is a beautiful message for all of us. And there was a story about a family that came to America. And the family came to America, and they had two sons. Now, um, the father had a very difficult time providing for the family, and the pressures mounted financially. And one of the sons named Yaakov, he went out west to, to strike his fortune big. He went to a city called Denver, Colorado. Yes, and our next Havdalah.com presenter, the Freedmans, will be come from Denver. Okay, so what happened was he lost track. The other brother, Moshe, was trying to get in touch with him. What's going on? Are you in touch with Dad? Let's get back into, you know. And Yaakov basically cut himself off from the family. That's the bottom line. The letters, telegrams, it's still in the 20s. There wasn't uh, Twitter accounts or Facebook. There wasn't anything going on. So... The bottom line is finally the father is on his deathbed. Moshe has no other recourse. He actually travels out to Denver to find Yaakov. He gets to Yaakov's office. He tracks it down. Yaakov turns out to be a tremendous, successful millionaire. He hasn't sent any money home. He actually went his own way. So he's in the office. He's in the office. And he asks the secretary, can I see him? And the brother refuses him. Yaakov refuses to see his brother Moshe. It's a very difficult story. How do we understand this? But that's what happened. Finally, Moshe said, he left a message with the secretary, uh, just tell Yaakov that his father's on his deathbed in New York if he wants to see him before he dies. So Moshe goes back, and a couple days later, believe it or not, Yaakov, his heart melted a little bit, went back to New York and was on his deathbed. And he comes to his father and he says, Abba, Daddy, Tati, it's me, it's Yaakov, it's Yaakov. And the father looks at him, and he's very ill, but he's still very uh, with it. He says, who are you? He says, what? Yeah, yeah, Dad, I know it's been many years, but, you know, it's still me. I'm your son. I'm, it's Yaakov. And the father says, I just don't know who you are. I'm sorry, I just don't remember you. And Yaakov, the third time, he says, Dad, don't you remember me? And the father said on his deathbed, he said, if Moshe's not your brother, then I can't be your father. The way Hashem looks at us, at all his children, he relates to us as a father, as a loving parent, when we treat our siblings well. And if we treat our siblings like strangers, if I'm a stranger to my siblings, then how can he be our father? Okay, so that's really the message hopefully we'll take from this Shabbos and this Abdullah to uh, strengthen ourselves in terms of loving our fellow Jewish brothers and sisters, okay? So that we will have a loving father in heaven. All right, so now the next special uh, thing we have going on is that the Schwartz family, who has been the Jet family in Champagne for three years, all right? Okay, down in the cornfields by themselves, without a minion, without a lot of the basic Jewish 
uh, necessities that uh, uh, Jews need, and they have been doing it for the sake of teaching fellow Jews about Torah and how great it is to be Jewish. So, we first of all like to thank them for their three years of amazing, amazing work for Jet and for the whole Jewish people. Okay, all right, end of my announcements. Now we can go around for the stars of the show and just everyone say their favorite part of Shabbos, starting with the Schwartzes. My favorite part of Shabbos this week was definitely having lunch at the Garfinkels. <laughs> Good answer! Okay, thank you, Rabbi. I'm going to second that. Okay. Although we got we got the kids in the mirror, we got good time. Oh, that was a good time for me. <laughs> okay, skipping. Here we go. Who's up? I really enjoyed our meals and guests. This week. Meals and guests. Okay, that's tequila. Okay, Ima. I enjoyed our guests and being able to hang out outside. Beautiful. And now we have a really adorable Yona Bitsalo Schwartz. Do you like Shabbos, Yona? <laughs> you do? Does that pasty taste good? Yeah. Okay, who's that? Meira. Go ahead, Meira. Perfect. Go ahead, Meira. Do you want to say your favorite part of Shabbos? You don't have to. Did you like playing with the Garfinko girls? Did you like the swing? Did you like the swing when you went whoosh? No, she's tired. Okay. Miri, losing your tooth. Okay, I know Rena was very excited to say something. Rena? You said you wanted to say something? No, no don't. I was wrong. Okay. All right, so I think that's it. Is that it? My favorite part of, my favorite part of Shabbos was having our beautiful family here, having the Schwartzes here, and um, really just loving Shabbos. It's a lot of fun. And we could do it, right? So all those people listening out there, do it. Every, any week, just come on the Shabbos train. you got to come join us. Okay, here we go. Now we're ready for Havdalah. Nay, I Yeshua see a tabula of God, Kiazi Vizim Rasia do no e, Vahi Shua, Ushaft and Mahi, and Mrs. On my Neshua, Madunai Hayeshua, Alamaha Verta Sako, Sako, the Nights of Simono, His Cavalano Eloha to sell, all the Nights of Shadam of the Abba, Adunoy or Shamalakian, and of Yam Kareno. Baruch <laughs> Okay, Shavua Tov, everyone. Ready? Oh, I'm going to sing with me this week. It's exciting. Eliyahu Hanavi Eliyahu Hatishbi Eliyahu 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 Agiladi Imerav Yameinu Yavah Eleinu Imashi
Okay, Shavuot to everyone. Have a beautiful, blessed week. And we will see you soon here at Havdalah.com. And a big shout out to Shabbat.com. Find your Shabbos placements around the world. <laughs>